He's the most entertaining 135er in the world. They got him ranked at number 12 finally, but he's number one in your hearts. We flew him all the way from Arizona to Calabasas, California. It's Sugar Sean on this week's Food Truck Diaries, and I'm feeding him Mexican food. Let's go. Make it big, big, super thick. From my wallet to my check. I don't want it if it's skinny, but I need it if it's thick. Need a thick girl for the thick boy. I need everything I get, super thick boy. You ready? Used to have a model bitch, now I got a thick one. Yeah, I do. Last night went late, yeah, we had a sick one. Yeah, very drunk. Yeah, and I like options. I don't like Sugar Sean. Like What's up, brother? Not Left not. hand. Got a little bit of a brace on that right hand. The money maker, some would say. I know, I always get made fun of because I supposedly get hurt after every fight, but I don't think people understand that we're, we're fighting. We're fighting. So, happens. I, yeah, I uh, fractured my thumb in that last fight, bounced my hand off his head like 14 times in 15 seconds, so it's bound to happen. Were you were you aware that you broke it when it happened? Right after You knew the right fight. away. Oh, right when right you walked out. Right after the out. fight, yes. I, I felt that right after it was stopped, and like, it, it instantly got swollen, um, but during, uh, I, d I didn't feel it. Because no. the adrenaline? The adrenaline, I was just having too much fun did you hit him on like on usually like you break your hand or finger like up if it's up here if it's like behind here I, I couldn't dial in the right shot Tim thinks he sees it saw it in the fight um, or in the replay where it was I don't remember the exact shot usually I'm pretty accurate and I can yeah. land on their chin but just one little mistake and I mean you, you break your thumb it's kind of the only thing slowing you down though like injury. other than that yeah injury because other than that you're kind of starching dudes yeah that's I mean that's kind of I said it before I was on the Contender Series. When I was going into the Contender Series, I said I have that it thing. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come in the UFC and, and knock everybody out and, and blow up. And it's just kind of been that mindset, and that it's been happening. I thought the last guy, like you talked about this, like not fighting. You know, everyone's like, oh, we want to see him fight a top five guy or top ten. You know, that's the fight world. You know, yeah. You know, like, we want to see Jake Paul fight Canelo. Right. Jesus Christ, right. man! But especially in the UFC. I think you're the one guy that the UFC has done right by, like, not just, obviously you have all this, you know, fan support and everyone wants to see you fight. They're doing a good job with you. I, I'd like to get your perspective on it, but they're doing a good job where they're not just tossing you, like, right to a title fight. Because yeah. it, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And we've seen with other guys, I can list some guys out for you. I don't want to call anybody out, but where they do catapult them right to the top and they're not ready for it yet. Like, I, to me, like, your story, like, the come up, there's nothing better in the UFC than the guy's come up. Because once you're there, it's like, yeah, all right, he has millions of dollars and he's doing the, the goddamn thing. But the come up's the most fun for the fans. So I think they're, they, you're the one guy they finally got it right where they're not just pushing you into these terrible situations. Yeah, and a lot of the UFC fighters, are, and they, just, they get almost jealous is the right word or whatever. Jealous would be the best I think words. I think so, too, but also I'm, it's not – it's not just the UFC is like, oh, they can't just pick a random person and build them up like that. You've got to have the performances I'm having, which I'm knocking people out. And I'm knocking good guys out. Eddie Wineland, Thomas Almeida, like, they're not maybe not in their prime or whatever, but Thomas Almeida is a motherfucker. Like, he, he's motherfucker. Legitimate correct. skills. Eddie Wineland, I could say the same thing. Um, Fought for a title. Holly and Paiva was, it, dude's a beast. He's young. He's 25, black belt. My thing with Paiva, it's like, it. You know, people like, oh, they're, they're giving him fights. Like, you look at Paiva's record, like, he's no punk, man. I think he had 20-something-odd fights. I think, yeah. was it, 19-2 and two or yeah. something like that? Like, that's not like a walk in the park. Right. Like, to me, almost like the UFC didn't do you, give you, do you any favors giving you that fight. Like, he's not a big name, really tough guy, a lot of experience. You start him, you know. You Wasn't ranked. Him. Wasn't ranked. Like, yeah, a lot him. of people, yeah. I mean, I'm, I have a lot of pressure on my shoulders fighting guys that I'm supposed to go out there and knock out. Do like, you feel pressure? I, I, in, in my heart and my mind, I'm confident I'm going to go out there and knock him out. So I, be, like, and I believe that. But that's it. Doesn't matter who I fight. I'm going to think that. Um, but it, it's not like it's not guaranteed. Fighting is crazy. God, no. It's yeah. not a guarantee that I'm going to go out there and knock that guy out. No. If that fight went longer, my thumb could have been so bad I couldn't even use my right hand. I could have lost that fight. And then it's not like, uh, oh, you you fought a can. It's like, oh, you lost to nobody. It's tricky. It's a tricky situation. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 fighting, dude. So anything can happen. But also, you know, I, I think for you, too, like, there's this pressure on you. But also the cat's out of the bag. Like, everybody yeah. knows you're good. Yeah. Like, it's not like, oh, what's, what, is Sugar going to take him down and submit? Like, I mean. That's it, still kind of the narrative. 
a you lot. Think? I, I think a lot of the people. I mean, they, I submitted talking to Gomi. I went in eight minutes with Gilbert Melendez. Like I can grapple. Correct. But for whatever reason, like that's not a fight, so it's different. Gra- grappling jiu-jitsu and grappling fighting, they are different. So I mean, there is still the narrative like. All you got to do is take it down. Put him up against... Everyone's going to put me up against the fence. That's the first thing. And then try to take me down. Putting me up against the fence is harder than it sounds. Like, yes. a lot of people... Like, that's the goal. Put him up against the fence. Well, that doesn't work. Tried it. I'm juking up against yeah. the fence. And then you get hit with something. And you don't really know where it's from. But it's, what, I, what I'm saying, cat's out of bag as far as your striking abilities. Yeah. Like, no one's surprised that you're a good striker now. Right. Like, we're, we, we kind of expect it. Yeah. Even and, though you're... Like, especially your last fight, that was a tough guy. Like, we're, we're expecting a knockout. Right. Unfortunately, that's... that's I don't want to say unfortunate, but, like, that's the narrative now. Yeah, no, I definitely feel that kind of pressure. Like, I got to go out there and perform. perform. But, but I don't feel like I have to change my style or change my anything. That's how I've been, I've been fighting for 11 years, and I've been doing the same thing for 11 years. I go out there, and I knock people out. It's nothing that I have to – I don't do that. I don't have, like, a – that's just how I fight. Yeah, it's your style. I, I can't, like, you're I, not intending to do it. It's just that's your nature. That's what happens, yeah, yeah. when I fight. Yeah. But also, you've been fighting for 11 years, but how many professional fights do you have? Um, 16. 16, which is a good amount. A 15 and 0, and I've had 16 fights. That's a pretty good amount, so you have experience. So it's like, I had 15 amateur fights, too. Which is a lot, because my argument was going to be like, let's say you're the matchmaker for a day. Mm-hmm. What do you do with Sugar Sean next? It's a good question. You know, there's the Adrian Giannis fight I think a lot of people would love to see. It's two young strikers. Um, and I look at Adrian Yanez as a really good striker. Or really? Good, I mean, I think he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, too. Yeah. Young. He's a stud. He's a stud. Yeah, he's, a stud. stud. he's not ranked. I don't care. I've never cared about rankings. Um, You're Adrian, ranked now, though. I'm ranked number 12 now. Some people say number one and two. <laughs> I, a lot know. of people say one or two. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so there's the that fight, the Pedro, uh, prelim Pedro is an option. Dominic Cruz could be still an option. Um, I, just, I don't think Cody's an option right now just because... It's just low risk, low reward, or high high risk, low reward. And I, I heard you say, because I, I love both you and Cody, so I don't want you guys I to like fight. I don't have to pick, because I, I love both you guys. Yeah. I ride with both you guys. And I heard you say on Full Send, shout out to Full Send, where it's like, you're like, there's no upside to fighting Cody. Like he's lost whatever, how many fights he's been knocked out. My only caveat with that is. No matter what has happened for him in his last five or six fights, he's still a former champ, veteran, big name, still ranked pretty fucking high. No, he's not. They took him out of the rankings? Not ranked at all, which I don't Did care. They, they took him completely uh, he, out of the he, rankings? He's not ranked. He's not ranked. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure. You know, it, someone could check that, but yeah. I don't think he's ranked. And I think... My, my only caveat is with that, it's like, you know, the, the these guys that you named before him besides Dominic Cruz... Uh-huh. The hardcores, and we know him, your team knows him, those are yeah. badasses. Yeah. But as far as like the narrative on you, oh, he's not fighting anybody, which right. is stupid to say, but let's just say if we wanted to entertain that he's not fighting anybody, Cody is somebody. Not ranked. You know what I'm saying? He's not, he took him completely out of the rankings. So that definitely doesn't make sense for you. So my argument's completely ruined. Well, not necessarily, because I did say Adrian Giannis, who's not ranked, but he's coming off a win. Cody's lost six. He's won one fight since 2017. He's been knocked out, I think, six times. Yeah, and I he really just got wish you'd have won that last fight. At 125 from Kai Car France, who's 5'4. I'm 6'6, six, six, Brandon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you're 6'8? Six, six? And yeah. I'm 6'9, so no. that's cool. Uh, yeah. No, but he's 6'9, six, you're 6'6. Six, six. He just got knocked out by, by Kai Car France, who I like, who's a stud, who's Super a beast. Super stud. But he's, dude. But he, but he also went down. I, I see your argument, but Cody cutting down first time to 125, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So the cut, maybe had an issue with it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that. The more we talk about this, it, doesn't make a lot of sense as we keep going. I was yeah. going to pitch you on that fight in your coach league. No, right. I, I just, the, the it thing could is, happen. It still could happen. I'm not going to say it's not going to. I just like the, but I guess the name recognition, and I do think it'd be a good fight. He is a hard hitter. He clearly has skills. Yes. I don't want to see you guys fight because I love both you guys, but I get your argument, yeah. and I don't have one <laughs> anymore. So if to he, me, if he would have won his last fight, it makes all the still sense. Still, it's at 25. He won at 25. It makes more it makes, sense. You have more of a. But he'd probably fight again at 25. The fact that he's coming off a loss at a weight class below me now, now we want that. Right. I called him out three, four fights ago, and he would. He just kept saying no, no. Dude, you called no, him out when no. we were doing the companion. I called him. He was on the companion. You called yeah, him out, and yeah. we're like, and then oh, you know, yeah, we, right. we don't have audio. And then someone was like, hey, he just called out yeah. Cody, and Cody's like, let's fucking do it. And then he goes to 25, which yeah. makes no sense to me. Yeah. So I just I don't see that fight happening, but it could potentially happen. You want to turn it down. You never know. But I guess because you were saying that if they want you to fight these bigger names, you want to get paid like So, I, and I take that back. I said that probably three or four fights ago. Now it's like, 
I have two more fights in my contract. I'm gonna fight who who they offer me. They offer me Holly and Paiva. I fought him. They offer me. I'm. I, I haven't. I have this narrative that I'm picking fights too. You know, they offered me Paiva. I didn't go to the UFC and say, "Hey, can I fight Paiva?" They offered me Paiva. I said, "Yeah." I didn't like that fight for you. And I, it, I, I didn't, I, I didn't mind it. I know he. Well, he technically was ranked 15 when I got a fight. Yeah, got he's offer. a fucking tough dude and not a big name. I just feel like young the, stud. Yeah, it was a tough fight. I going didn't like it. And going into that fight, I had bruised ribs. Okay. I had, I, I was, that was a, that was the most mental negativity I've dealt with going into a fight. I did very well and I was confident going into you it. You looked phenomenal. But I was, I, I hadn't grappled in, in three weeks. I didn't spar in those last three weeks. I, I hit mitts and ran. That's all I did because I had bruised ribs and I didn't, in the back we were hitting mitts. I didn't know if I could grapple. Yeah. I knew he was going to try to take me down. That's yep. what, that's, every time I get into a fight, I'm like, that's got to be their goal. Take, yep. take me down. They're not going to strike with me. So going into that fight, I was just like, fuck, this is going to be, this is like a big test mentally for me. Well, I felt like, and before that, you find Chris, who's the Mexican zombie, like you yeah. just unloaded on him. But again, to me, being a fan and caring about you, like I like that you didn't start him in the first round. Yeah, I want which you. Which I get, did start him in the first I, round. You no, you let him saved by the bell. You let him up like a Mexican pinata, yeah, which is fantastic. But I like that you had to go three rounds yeah. and be, and you were able to show off your skills. Right. And he kept coming forward because yeah. it lets us know, like, if you're a fan, we can put you know stock into you because you're not going to quit. Right. You're not weakly weak-minded you don't have there's no cardio yeah. issues like all right we got an actual contender here yeah. where if you just start them first round start them then you face a real tough guy and you don't start them it's like oh how sugar gonna do now we kind of know right well so yeah, i thought that was good the for fight you. before that i fought thomas almeida it was a it was a very different fight it did go three rounds but it was a very different pace completely fight. different like it was completely it was, different it was, it was my pace it was i hit him when i wanted to he correct he couldn't close the gap chris literally just kept walking forward and eating shots the hardest thing to do is th- is is punch going backwards and I did that for 14 and a half minutes like I was punching I was countering basically that entire fight which, which I thought very was good for you do. it was as good for me as far as the me. progression of your career I don't yeah. know how your coach thinks of it but I thought I thought it was a good I mean it, I thought it was a good learning night yeah it was a good learning night but it was also just complete dominance I was never in danger no I, I was I was. is anyone saying it was a close fight no 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 but it was just uh, but people expect fun. you to start you. oh yeah yeah, yeah did. but I thought as far as your career longevity goes that was a good outcome But then, you know, when you talk about how you're saying you're not saying that, how, you know, let's say they give you Dominic Cruz. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not getting paid right now to at a Dominic Cruz level. And obviously he's been around forever and he deserves it it more so any money they're paying him. Right. So if you take him on, obviously there's going to be a pay discrepancy. Yeah. And that's another thing. I wasn't really worried about them offering me big, big fights right now because I'm not getting paid big, big money. So therefore it's like, but Dana did say, I don't mean to rub, Dana did say, it's time to give that kid big fights and pay him. Go find anywhere else Dana says he's going to pay someone. I agree. So I got, I got two more fights and, uh, I'm expecting a, a pretty good sized contract and I it's not even like, like a lot of the fighters say they want to get paid like I feel like I truly deserve it and for Dana to acknowledge that it just it shows oh that I would it's, cut it's, that thing and in the meeting be like hey remember this yeah no I think and I think I have a good relationship with the UFC and, and I don't think it's gonna be an issue and I don't want it to come down to like a Francis thing where Francis is in the media because I did I was in the media a couple fights ago talk about money and I don't want it to be like that no you don't want to be that all. way and also to the UFC's defense, which is rare, I argue with them, they're brilliant where, uh, and I don't think a lot of people figure this out, the UFC back in the day, they were a pay-per-view based business where they needed stars to sell mm-hmm. pay-per-view. Yeah. That model is over. Yeah. So whether Francis fights, Sugar fights, Izzy fights, you name it, it they don't care. They just, they're filling fights for the, their ESPN deal. Okay. So, so they're, they're not a star model anymore. Right. They're getting their nut no matter what. So if you or France is like, I'm out, the UFC goes, that's why you don't see them really fighting for people. They go, yeah. okay, cool. We're still going to fill that card and make it happen. Yeah. So, and I, and I said this, I'm not just saying this because you're here right now. I said this on the, the shop show. Take out Conor McGregor. He's the outlier. Yeah. Besides Conor McGregor, you're the most valuable person to the UFC. Yeah. If you look at your, your, you know, you look at your YouTube following, your, your podcast, your merch, your analytics when it comes to Twitch, your, mm-hmm. your social media relevance, like for what they're trying to do and the market they're trying to go in, there's nobody more valuable to the company than you. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, yeah. I, and I, I selfishly or humbly agree. I, yes. I think I have the... I'd love I've, to hear an <laughs> argument. I would, if anyone wants to argue, your coach isn't going to argue with me, no. but I'd love to hear it. I've been, uh, I've been saying that 
I was going to be in that position since Contender Series, which I think was seven, eight fights ago. It's a long time to put out performance after performance after performance after performance. Um, and another random thing too is what I'm kind of surprised with, but not really, is Peter and Aljo are co-main event and their main event pulls out. So what do they do? They move the car, they move them. Correct. They can't even do their own, they can't even sell their own uh -uh. pay-per-view and they're the bantamweight champion, both technically the bantamweight champion right Which now. Which sucks. It, and yeah. they're supposedly the best division in the UFC. Yep. And uh, I, I think that's pretty surprising. Um, but I think what you've done, which fighters need to learn, and again, people can hate on Jake Paul, especially and what he's doing, but what he's doing is showcasing to all you fighters, like, listen, man, I'm not with the UFC. Yeah. I'm, I, I built this on my own, so I'm capitalizing off my own fan base. Right. And you, you don't need this huge, huge organization to get things done. And this is how much money I'm making. He's pretty open about how much money he makes. So for you guys, especially, and like, this isn't for everyone. There's about five fighters who can do it. You're one yeah. of the five who were, you know, Hopefully, you guys figure out the UFC and you guys come to agreement. It's a great deal for you. But if not, now at least you've seen a path yeah. in Jake Paul where you can go down that route and make all the money in the world. Yeah, and that's boxing specifically, too. I don't, I mean, I guess you see Habib coming out with his own. His own um, league. His own league. PFLs like there's there's like opportunities to make money in other but organizations. But those aren't. See, I'm not talking. Those aren't fuck you money. No, no, no. The, no, no like, like, I'm talking right, about right. fuck you money. You're one yeah. of the guys who could do it. Yeah. Where no, you could yeah. venture at, where if they don't want to play ball, you're one of the maybe handful of guys. Nate Diaz, Connor, right. you, Francis can be able to do it if he wins uh, mm -hmm. January 22nd. There's there's only a handful of guys who can do it, but at least that's why I like what Jake Paul's doing. He's yeah. shown you the value of taking ownership. But yeah. also, to your credit, you've built it all. Yeah. Like UFC wasn't like, wasn't like, hey, make sure you dye your hair, dude. Right. Make sure you wear this dope fucking yeah. jewelry. Make sure you do this. Make sure you knock the guy out. Make sure you have a dope ass twitch. Like yeah. you've built all this yourself. Yeah, and I've also been like thankful to the UFC that I had the opportunity because my Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, none of that would have grown without me knocking people out in the UFC. Correct. Like even if I was knocking people out in Bellator, like they don't get as many eyes. Not even close. Like none of these get as much eyes so I had like the reason I am popular is because of the UFC like I, it's I don't a, see it's, it's a, it's a trade-off right a, it's, it's a, a given so when people when they complain about pay at the same time too like the UFC did give you the stage mm -hmm. and maybe they're not paying you what you're worth but on the back end of it you're smart enough businessman you surround yourself with brilliant guys where you you know you have twitch you have your own merch yeah. and you're doing all this other shit where you have this additional income yeah. and hopefully other fighters learn from that and realize like there's a lot that if you're just if you're waiting on the UFC to make you this <laughs> you're you're gonna be waiting forever yeah. like you got to take control of it a you got to yeah. win fights B you got to win them pretty pretty I, convincingly yeah. and then C you got to also manufacture your own hype man yeah winning fights doesn't cut it not in the UFC you got to you yeah. got to put on performances I mean that that's that's why I really do truly believe I was like the reason I grew so fast was because the performances, the Alfred Shack in the, my first fight wasn't crazy against Terry on where my second fight, I broke my foot with three minutes left in the fight, still won the fight. And then I went on like the Eddie Wineland knockout, the Jose Quinones knockout, knocked out Cheeto, knocked out. Um, <laughs> and you're 6'6", six, six, I'm 6'9", six, Cheeto knockout. Uh, yeah. no, but I, then also, if you think about it too, like it was the perfect storm on that, the uh, Tuesday Night Contender Series, yeah. we get that crazy Snoop knockout Bob. and Snoop going viral. Like Posted none of that's media. by accident, dude. Like oh. you've earned that. Like yeah. nothing was given to you. Like you, for you to get that crazy knockout, it just so happened that you've been training for how fucking long and you prepared for the moment. Just happened Snoop's there, he posted, goes viral. And then you have this dope look, you have the personality, the charisma, the skills. Not everyone can do it. Yeah. It's been Don't good. give him too much credit. It's been fun. Don't give him too much no, credit. No, Snoop posted on social media after my last fight. I mean, he still, he still talks about Sugar Shane. He doesn't ever talk about me, but he always, he says Sugar Shane. He's a fan of Sugar Shane, so I'll take it. It's close enough. You'll take it. He's, He's said, probably high. Every time, we'll, we'll, every we'll time, Sugar Shane. Well, let me feed you, dude, because you don't. Have, how how long were you thinking before we eat? How long were you thinking you're out? What do you think? Um, like, I got what, again, Crystal Ball. I, I go. All right, uh, when does Sugar want to fight? I'm what gonna usually I'm a three fight a year kind of guy. That's the goal. I'm gonna say two this year. I'd like maybe July and December. Fair point. Let me feed you. We can feed. Let's we eat. can eat. Oh, then. we can eat. We Let's can do eat. Let's do it. Sure. You're no stranger to Mexican, man. We're both, uh, we both got Mexican girls. Yeah. Does your girl cook? She cooks. She, she doesn't, 
she enjoys it when she cooks for me, but like if we're having a bunch of people over, she's not gonna be like, let's, I'm gonna cook. So yeah. she like does it because she knows like, I, I'm like really into what she cooks. Is she so. making like basole and taquitos? She and makes sopa. Not quite. She doesn't. She makes more fucking hamburgers when I want them. Okay. Or, or she's she makes a lot of salads, especially in camp. My girl's specialty is her salsa. Oh. You will shit your pants. Oh God. <laughs> Hi. Hey, how you doing? I'm great. I'm gonna do the chicken and avocado quesadilla. All right, dude. Por favor. Por favor. And, uh, yeah, ooh, I bet those are fire, too. I don't know, I might just do that for now, though. Ooh, I bet that mole burrito is fucking fire. Dude, mole? I love mole. Damn, mole burrito? I know, dude. Uh, I'm, I got these 10 pounds, but I did 29 for the thick mother. Um, I'm gonna do the... Zopatecane bowl? The bowl? Zopatecane bowl? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a little break from me chatting Sugar Sean's air off before we jump into this delicious Mexican food, man. Because we're eating food, but you're looking like they eat like trash, but they're in shape. That's right, because we're on Peloton, man. And Peloton, their bikes, the Bike Plus, they're ringing the new year with so much new. New classes, new music, new ways to keep your workouts fun and motivating. You're not doing the same thing over and over. All right? The, the new additions for the year, you ask? Oh, that's funny. Weird. They offer boxing. Yep. Peloton is stepping into the ring with its newest Discipline, no gloves needed. All right, discover a fast, fierce, fun workout with Peloton instructors in your corner. You don't have to be a professional. You never have to box before. These classes are help you to work up a sweat, the fundamentals, footwork, fun combos, just something different, man, if you're used to always doing the same thing. You got a new artist series, all right, music selection. Peloton's adding fun new artist series classes. Work out the music of single artists from for an entire class, which I like to do, uh, or from your favorite hits. They got deep cuts. You're talking about pop, rock, hip hop, EDM. They have over 100 artist series to choose from. Find your favorite music. Turn your next workout into a freaking concert, man. They have more variety. It's easier to stick to your goals when you keep the workouts interesting and you're engaged. Peloton has workouts for every goal, day, mood, de-stress from a long day with 30 minutes of strength, 20 minutes of cardio. Do a quick 15-minute total body class, all right, before you head to work, before the kids come home. Super easy, man. All right, for a limited time, try Peloton app free for two months. Then it's just $12.99 a month after that. New members only. Visit onepeloton.com slash app to learn more. That's Two months free at O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N.com. Offer expires January 31st, 2022. Terms apply. You can find your boy on Peloton. My name is Thick Prez. No, I couldn't be a commentator. I'm, I'm, bi I'm biased on a fucking I talk podcast. a lot of shit about the commentating, like DCF. <laughs> but, but then again, I'm like, I also say I couldn't do it. But I you you were it. critical of DC. Why? But here's my, thing, here's my thing with DC. So, you know, DC, one of the greatest to ever do it, personality. He, if, I, I think, obviously, and it became like a trending thing for fighters to shit on him. Mm -hmm. Like, call him out for his commentating. Yeah. You know, obviously, he's crushing it, and he's, he's very good at it. But he's also, you know, he's a fighter, man. So he's having fun, too. Yeah. So I think people got to realize, like, he's not Rogan. He's not, you know, he's not like a John Anik or Dominic Cruz, who, even though Dominic Cruz is a fighter, Dominic Cruz, I think, does the best job separating himself from the fighter and being yeah. a strict. He's a m wizard as far as fighting goes. Like, knows the game yeah. inside and out. He's good at that. But I think with DC, when you mix in personality and he's an emotional dude in a good way, mm -hmm. you're going to make some mistakes, and you guys got to give him that leeway. No, but I you have an issue with what? There, there, I've had an issue with his commentating a couple, uh, quite a bit. <laughs> really? Actually. Yeah, I've been saying you, it for but, a while. But you don't think he's? I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just kind of being a puss. But I, I also, dude, they sit there for three hours, watch fight after fight after, from the prelims to the end of the fight. So, and I'm usually at the end of the card, you know. Um, so it's like he's been already commentating for a while. I don't remember. Sometimes like, when you, uh, you, you know, want more enthusiasm. No, out of him? just sometimes when he says like, for example, a, a couple times I fight a. Uh, because I watch my fights back quite a bit. Sure. Uh, after the Cheeto fight, Cheeto lands up. One of the luckiest kicks on his, his toe lands on my, my perennial nerve. Okay. So I go into my next fights, and uh, I fight Thomas Almeida, who's a great kickboxer, Muay Thai. He's going to try to kick my legs. Um, 
he tried to kick my legs a bunch, and I had I had the right answer. I was pulling out, and I was checking. I was returning. Good answers. I fight uh, Chris Montino, who did kick my legs quite a bit, but also I was countering, you know, switching stances, checking. I was doing good. Might and then right. I fight uh, Paiva, and I th- I'm pretty sure he says something like, I don't know why these guys don't try to just kick his leg like Cheeto did. I'm like, dude, I just fought Thomas Almeida, who tried to kick my legs up. Fuck, then I just fought Chris Montino, who did kick my legs. What do you mean you don't know why just, these guys aren't trying? Just to defend trying. him. Now, granted, he's getting paid a lot of money to commentate. I, maybe that's like, because, you, you know, think how many fighters he has to cover. Right. So maybe that uh, Cheeto fight is in his head. Mm-hmm. And so he's but bypassing. That, with that Cheeto fight, you go over, you watch it, and you pull up the fights. He didn't, it wasn't, he wasn't doing a good job kicking my legs. Mm-hmm. It's he just literally kicked. The, oh, sweet spot. Yes. If you want to say who kicked whose legs that fight, I kicked him and spun him in a circle. Yeah. I kicked his legs. Not obviously. It was there were better technical calf kicks, but his toe hit my nerve. So now it's oh I don't know how to. But but that was one instance. Another thing is like oh he's looking at the clock. He's looking at the clock. It's like you don't want to know how much time you got left. That last fight was perfect. I look up at the clock. I know how much time I have left. 30, 40 seconds, whatever. I I rock him now. Okay, do I make the decision to put his to to empty my tank? Correct. And no, try to put him out, enough. or say okay I'm gonna save it. I'm not gonna have enough time. See, to, but. That's Again, high level I, striking that he didn't see. Agree, but he, here's my thing because he comes from the same school of thought as I did back in the day. You're a different breed. You're a different breed, but back in the so when I saw you look at the clock, I didn't go, "Oh man, he's tired and he's he's making sure, you know, whatever." I looked at it like, "Oh, that's a fucking veteran move, man. He's trying to see if he puts him out or not." I was with you on that. In general, though, from the 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 cut cloth that DC and I come from, if you look at like a Woodley, wrestling, wrestling yeah. a Woodley or somebody else, when they would look at the clock, they want out, man. They're trying right. to find way out. So maybe he's had so many of that happen. And you know, he's a which wrestling is, coach Which too. is exactly what the case is. Correct. So, I mean, that's the case. In wrestling, you look at the clock, your coach yells at you. Like, what yes. the hell are you doing? Look at the, you know. So that's where he was coming from. Mm-hmm. So for me to go out there and say that was just just good banter. You just something to talk oh, about. Oh, no, it's interesting. I like DC. Okay, do I not. do I think do I think he wants me to lose? I do. Why do you think that? Because I remind him of John Jones, Sean Jones, baby. <laughs> Sean Jones. I think that's I think that's what it is. And I no, he, I do. you have nothing in common with John Jones besides six, a long six. reach and a big dick. <laughs> no, I do think though. I do think he would. You're six, six, I think he would get dick. satisfied wanna, seeing me lose. I, I do. I, I disagree. And I, these, I bet DC reaches out to you after this. I disagree. I think you have that like. To get to your level, I think you have to have chips on your shoulder and feel that way, and that's fine, and that's if that motivates you, great. But I, I don't think DC has like any ill will toward you, like, like because DC. the better you do, the better it is for everybody. The more eyeballs, because again, if Sugar Sean were going on a three fight fucking losing streak, it, it'd be a, it'd, it'd be terrible. Yeah, no, I definitely like I'm. It's good banter, DC. I like you, but it's also UFC is a male soap opera, you know. Yeah. So like. Any of that stuff gets traction when it's really not a big deal. Yeah, I'm not trying to pick B for DC because in reality he'd fucking kill me. So these are facts. Yeah, and he some guys call him out, and I'm yeah. like, really? You I know he wanna, can do. I don't want. I know he looks out of shape. He's built like a hippo, but <laughs> yeah, he's definitely fat. He's as built like a baby hippo. Fat, hippo. But he still has fucking now. skills. Yeah, still <laughs> skills. I mean, dude, he's one of yeah one of the greatest of all times. Yeah, ever. hands down. Now I heard. I, you, and if I went and commentated one UFC fight, I bet people would be like, "What the fuck? You sound like an idiot." I guarantee I'd say some shit. That was like, uh, what? Nah, you're doing yourself a dis- disservice. And that's oh, yeah, why I want you on Fight Companion. Because I, I, think, I think you'd be entertaining as shit. I would try it. Yeah, I don't no. think, because everything you do is pretty entertaining. So I think if yeah. you did decide to go that route, like yeah. never say never, yeah. I think it would be pretty fun. If I did a commentating thing, well, I'd do the Fight Companion for sure. But if I was to, after my career, do whatever um, commentating, it would have to be something where you could say, you could cuss just openly. Yeah, that's I don't fight know companion. if I can do it, dude. Like ESPN? Oh, I I guess pu- pay-per-views, Joe, does he cuss? I mean, a but, little bit, but, but still, the ESPN before the pay-per-views, it'd be fucking tough. I agree. No, yeah. Just I mean, part of the part oh, of the if someone's like, hey, you can't cuss, I wouldn't have a job. Yeah. Like, I cuss all the time. Me fucking, too. Dude, fuck sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't uh, even, like, if, you know, like, some comics do those corporate gigs, and they ask me to do them, like, yeah. mm-hmm. and they're like, but you can't cuss. I'm like, I'm out. Like, I don't have a career if I can't cuss. Dude, that's one thing that would be so hard would be stand-up comedy or even, like, a live podcast because, like, when we were flying here, I told Tim, I was like, all right, we're going to our first live podcast in L.A., just joking around, but it'd be tough. I, live podcast would be as tough as stand-up com- comedy. I like to think of myself as a comedian. I'm pretty sure it says it in my Instagram bio. Like, I think that's where... Hilarious. Thank you. I think that's where, uh, that's where the views are of, like, comedy, but... 
Stand up would be so fucking hard. It's a beast. Like writing a joke would be hard, but delivering it, it would no, be the, so difficult. The toughest part about stand up is like, let's say you were you and your coach were training a move that was like dope in the gym, mm -hmm. and you're pulling off, pulling off, and you're doing a fight, and it just eats shit. You just fall on your back, and then you just got to keep doing it till you make it work. And there's only one way to do it is by mm -hmm. doing it live when everybody's watching. That's why stand up stuff. Yeah, no, that, that's definitely one of the toughest things. Toughest thing. But I th as far as live podcasts, like you know, have you done Rogan yet? I think I'm the youngest. I think I was 22 or 23. I think I was the youngest person to ever be on Rogan. Oh, one back point. in the day. But yeah, I was. I was right after I fought Andre Sockerman, broke so, my foot. So that was when. <laughs> so that <laughs> was. So that was when um, he was live. He was on Spotify, right? Correct. Because his shows used to be live. So like. The I think it was. I don't think it was live. It wasn't live, but it was before the Spotify. It was like in that little prop, little time where because Fight Companions, we used to. Do, I mean, we do Fight Companions live here, but then right. we do. I mean, the original Fight Companion with Callan, Eddie Bravo, oh, yeah. Rogan, and me. We were live, and dude, we get hammered, and then we would get out, and we wouldn't remember what we said. And the next day, we'd look at the headlines like, Fuck. you know, shop called female fighter a bitch. I'm like, oh, oh no, dude, I didn't I mean know. that. Like, I'm with the boys. <laughs> I didn't think anybody was listening. Oh, no. Boy talk, yeah, boy man. talk can get you in trouble. You gotta be careful. If you know you're live too, it's like, you know, you're a little more censored. Right. But that's right. where the liquor helps out. See, or doesn't help. <laughs> you're like, fuck. I know. Well, I'm, I'm saying it helps out because then you're just like, ah, fuck. But it. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I, I've been after that last fight against Chris. So two fights ago, that went on like every weekend, like eight weekends in a row. We were going to Miami, L.A., Texas. Like we were going out every weekend drinking, and it was fucking fun. <laughs> but alcohol is a motherfucker. I haven't drank. I drank after my last fight, uh, the the that night, and then I think I got drank. Uh, yeah, I drank one more time since then. So I haven't been drinking as, as much. long as you don't have a, as long as you don't have a problem. Yeah, I love it. I don't like. Uh, shit, I would have a drink right now. You know what I'm saying? And you don't have a fight. I mean, I, someone get that tiger thick. And I mean, I would take a sip. I, yeah, I, I'm gonna, Yeah, I plan on... Uh, I definitely don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I can control. I can turn on and off. I had a problem during the pandemic. There's nothing to do. Whatever. But, um, yeah, it's tough. But, it, so, yeah. So, after your fights, I think this is what else kind of builds everything you're doing. Like, your life looks... Fun. Like, granted, it's Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah. But your life looks as fun as your hairstyle because... You're with Takashi Six Nine. You're with you know yeah. by our boy Bradley Martin. You're like jet setting and all this shit. How, how, I mean, how do you even get in that world as far like Takashi Six Nine? Like that's random. Yeah. And didn't you guys get? Did you get tattoos together? Yeah. Which got, one? The Six Nine tat. He tattooed it on me. Well, part of it. And did he get? No, he should have got a sugar tat. Yeah, no, he should like got the, a sugar one. So I met him from Steve. Steve will do it. Uh, after that last fight when I fought Green Hair, uh, Chris, I flew out to Miami, and he's like, "Hey, you want to hang out with Six Nine? I'm like, "Fuck yeah, dude! I love bumping Six. Like, me too. I bump Six Fan all the fucking time. Yeah. And uh, so we met up with Six, and he's just a normal fucking good normal dude. dude. Yeah, I mean, like, I, what are we talking about here? You can only know someone so well when you you know you hang out and we go get drunk. Yeah. You know, like we hung out sober. Good dude. Good conversation. You know, but the first I we asked him or Tim asked him like, when was the first time you saw me fight? And it was when I did the rainbow hair, the first time I did my hair, when I fought Eddie Wineland. Oh, okay. He's like, someone's like, hey, you got to see this. And like, that was that hair was inspired, obviously, from there was the rainbow hair, it was 6'9 hair. It was dope. Um, but yeah, that was that was cool. So that's how I got in with 6. And, and uh, like, good dude, like, will you text now with 6 9 I talked to him the other day, because we asked him, we asked him if we wanted to be on the, be on the pod and do a Zoom call, and he's like, fuck Zoom. It's like, yeah, you're right. So it, it would be a better, it would be a better Zoom, or it would be a better pod. Like, we just got to fly out to my You could fly down there. And he's down to do to fly down there? Yeah, yeah. So I want to do, you know, so I texted him the other day. We talked here and there, but, um, and he's got some fucking sweet, sweet collabs coming out music-wise. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of him. I think the narrative on him, like, being a snitch, I don't really stay on that, but when I look more into it, you know, you look at his gang affiliation, stuff like that. See, I don't even, I, I, I don't even go that far. I'm like, I love his music. That's my, that, I jam out. I yeah, don't look at I like his else. I listen to his music in the gym, and then also when people hate on him for being a snitch, stuff like that, it's like, I think I would snitch too if I was in a situation. If, if, yeah, if they're banging you know his, banging like, his God, baby mama and stuff. Yeah. Supposedly I heard. So let's go away for life. And like, if you're just telling some people, man, you're going to be out. I'd be like, uh, where, where's your paper at? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. get me the fuck out of here. No. So I, I thought saw, he was a good dude. They, I liked him. kidnapped me and threatened to kill me. So yeah, yeah give me the fucking paper. So yeah. I don't put it too much on him. But other than that, like my actual real life, dude, that's like, th those are random. Those are rare things that happen after That's fights. what I'm saying. That's Instagram. That's not my life. I mean, it is it does look when I'm doing it. Like, it I'm looks doing fucking it. lit, though. But my life is, is well, not training right now because I haven't been able to because my cast, I just got it off. But, dude, it's I live 
in Peoria, fucking Arizona, dude. Like I live the it's, suburbs. It's like old, like it's like a more it's calm, slow, slow place. It's not like Scottsdale. I couldn't live there, dude. I I know chicks, dude. I, I got I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I'm away. There's no. There might be. I haven't met them in Peoria. There's not a lot of hot chicks out not there. Not compared to Scottsdale. I have a, uh, not I have Scottsdale. a uh, Airbnb rental mm. that me and my brother own out there. And oh it really? It's lit. Yeah. Well, that's, you place it's funny because out. I'm flying out. Um, I'm flying out a couple Twitch subscribers, and two of them are actually because I have an apartment where I game at, like right across the street from my house. And uh, I have two two kids from Twitch moving in. They're gonna live there. Oh damn! I, I met them once. They they flew down before. They fought. And I had like a Twitch fucking fight card. So they fought they in my cage. Together? Yeah, and it was funny. But anyway, they're coming down. I just bought a limo, like a 2000 Lincoln limo, Fantastic. so we can all cruise around together. But I'm bringing them out to Scottsdale. So I've only partied in Scottsdale maybe a couple times. It's and fantastic. Like, not recently. So I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah. But we're going to bring them out. When is that? Uh, end of January. Okay. It's going to be fucking funny. But uh, yeah, we're going to be cruising and then around. And what what's the plan with the Twitch kids? Like you're starting like your own sugar network? I'm just, what are we talking not about? Not even here? really. Like, like they're, just, they're just, I'm help, trying to help them get, you know, they're, they started their own podcast, you know the the the, the Brendan Schmidt show. They get 800 views, you know. Ran, they're like growing a little bit. So I'm just helping them come out and just helping them fucking get going. They both live with their parents. Like Schmidt, he's 29. I'm just helping them get going. They're good dudes. They're fucking creative. They want to work hard. And you know, I told them, I said, 29, that's I said, you got to come. You got to come out, and get a job. Don't rely on me. You got to do your own shit. But. I'm, I'm getting very busy. I might need some. But they to should do be under the Sugar Sugar brand. LLC. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna. I, I want them to make sure that they're gonna come out and just kind of. They know that they're secure and, and they're gonna have their own money. But I, realistically, like, I'm but getting very the busy. shine. Yeah, but the shine base, the rub off sugar is what's gonna really help them. Out. Oh, yeah, of course. But I don't, I don't and get I'm why we don't get sugar can. under thick boy, dude. What do you mean? The Where? thing we could do. I'm. I. I'm very uh, we'll open talk, minded. Man. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm a, I love business, dude. It's something that's super, super and fun. And this is for what me. I want to talk about on or out. We can do it here. But you're talking about the marijuana strain. Yeah. How? Yeah. Have, have people approached a you? A lot. And because uh, also, I don't get how the Diaz brothers don't. Make fuck you money yeah. off their own marijuana That's I, chain. Well, I kind of went on and that. And you whole should too. You, like you should tough. too. So it's you're tough. talking guy who started his own whiskey, and yeah. when I started my own whiskey, I, heard about that. I was like, oh, I'll yeah. just sell I make it. it and I sell it. Yeah. And then they're like, nah, bitch. No. The way it works, you need distributors, yeah. and those the sales team, they've been selling Buffalo Trace for 200 years, and then you just expect them to hustle your stuff for what? So it's like these relationships and getting to certain cities and you don't watch nationwide, you do what we're doing in February, you do Texas, Florida, right. Denver, Cali, New York, you see how it goes, then you branch out. Yeah. So it's it's a it's like beast. how Happy Dad did it, right? Yeah, there you do. There you go. But then with marijuana, like it's not legal everywhere. Yeah. That's what makes it so tricky. That's why Nick and Nate aren't making fucking money. That's why I don't have a strain right now. Ah, there's but so much that goes someone's into Someone's gonna it. listen to this and because Here's the thing about marijuana. There's so much money to be made in it. You have legit, like, and they're not, they don't, use, they probably don't even smoke weed, but you have legit business entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who have made $100 million in whatever their business. Now they're in the marijuana business. Right. And they look at you like, well, this kid's a fucking walking mm. gold mine. Yeah. And all you should be is the face of it, but you should have equity in the company. Yeah. And then that's your own shit. No, I, I, I plan on that being my $100 million business. That, that's your fuck like, you that's, money. That's going to be my fuck you money. And it's it, I know it's going to happen. It just has like Because we've done a strain before, and then it kind of just – there's so much logistics that goes into it, moving from state to state, and like if it's a seed or, or if it's the flower itself. It, there's just a lot of but shit. But you're going to – I'm telling you this now. You're going to partner with somebody who they have all that figured out. Dude. Yeah. All you got to do is promote it, and you have equity in it, and yeah. then you're going to get fucked Fuck you, money. Yeah. If you found out how much Mike Tyson makes off his strain, you'd go fucking nuts. Rightfully so, too. Yes. Mike fucking Tyson. Yes. I've never met him yet. You haven't no. done the uh, I got, I, hot boxing? No, we, ha we, haven't ha we haven't. It hasn't worked out yet. Oh, I'll I'll, I mean, I'll connect you guys fucking with Mike, Mike right after I, this. I remember listening to his book because I, uh, like, every time I'm in camp, I, like, listening to, uh, I, I mean, I listened to a Michael Jordan book when I was watching Last Dance. I think a couple fights ago, I listened to the Mike Tyson book. Dude, his story Tyson's has got to be the craziest fucking story of all time. The amount of chicks he was fucking <laughs> raw dogging, not giving a fuck. Fantastic, dude. I got me. Uh, I was just in bed like, wow. Think about he's that. my hero. Back in the day, <laughs> just the king of the world, and just slanging dick. Dude, I mean, went to prison. I hear you, but um, he's he's such an interesting dude because there's this thing about him. Like, I, I've done hot boxing. 
I co-hosted Hot Boxing with him and Francis Ngano. Mm. And you have Francis there. And Mike's been on Food Truck Diet. He's been on this show. Mm -hmm. And growing up, and you're young me, but you know, like, the legend of Mike Tyson, like, how scary he was. But then everyone's like, dude, he's so friendly now. He's a yeah. changed person. The but toe. you know how, like, when you see, like, a pit bull that you got and they're, like, all beefy and, like, he's really friendly with kids. You're like, okay. You know, like, with Tyson, it's, like, that same vibe. Like, he's a good, he's such a good person now. Mm -hmm. He's worked on himself so much and you love him. But you can fucking see Still in, in his there. eyes, man. Still if in shit there. pops off, everybody's fucked. Yeah. And he's one bad strain away from fucking twisting everybody's head off. And I was like nervous. Like it's hard. It's hard to make me nervous. In my yeah. head, I'm like, I'm just gonna take this fucking guy down, man. <laughs> if, 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 if he pops if off, I'm just gonna to, take his yeah. ass down. Hit a nice little. Now I'm like looking at his boys. I'm like, all right, he's old. He's not gonna do shit. He's old. I'm here with fucking three oh, hitsters. So I'm gonna take him down. As long as I get Tyson. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, no, but you can tell it's that those demons are embedded in yeah. his fucking soul. But like you said, he's done. You can tell he's done a lot of work. I mean, the, the, the toad, the toads definitely helped uh, his ayahuasca trips and stuff. You're fucking doing toads. I haven't. I've never done any of the toads really? or ayahuasca. I'm, you look like I've done with some psychedelic with, toads. My mushrooms. I've never done the toads though. I've uh. Now, do you lick the toad? or Are we talking about drops on the tongue? Anybody done it in here? I don't know. Tim fucked the toad. That's totally different. That makes sense. <laughs> Tim has some NFT toads. That's fine. No, Tim's a good Tim's a good dude because he'll if you're out with the, with the boys and, and you you find a little you find a chick and then she's hot she got a fat friend. Oh. No, oh, you, <laughs> you, you, you jumps on the grenade. You know it. Not, <laughs> not even if I have to. Dude, like, hold up. Let me get this straight. Coach and grenade hopper. Dude, what a fucking legend, man. Yeah. But d does Tim have to like when you're like out with Takashi and I or something like that? He's, all, he's right there with you, us. Yeah, he's with. I see him with you all the time. I fucking love him. He's a monster, right? I don't think you, he gets enough recognition for what he's done with you. But anyway, we'll, I'll get off his dick. But the thing is, is he's still your coach. Yeah. So when you're like in Miami getting lit, doing Takashi six nine, trying to tattoo his dick on your face, whatever, <laughs> are you trying to like? Is he like, hey man, like it's getting a little too hostile. Let's get out of here. Like, does he ever do? Does he ever no. do? Never. I mean, there's sometimes. Or is like, Tim the guy like, yeah, tattoo my face, to ne Tashi. Neither. Neither. If it's three thirty and I'm, it would like, he's like, all right, we gotta fucking like photo shoot at nine a.m. Let's go home. He's that guy. But it's not like, hey, dude, you need to fuck chill. I'm always pretty like. There's been times I get way too drunk, but in the for the most part, like when it comes to training, hey, you need to be here. You need to do this. I don't need anyone. To tell me, I don't need someone to tell me, hey, you should probably do be You're running a more. You should probably be fucking going to. Like, I don't really need that. I'm. I'm I'm there. I, I show up and I do what I need. What needs to be done. No, you're professional. But, uh, levels. Which this brings my next subject. My boy Todd Feldman. He's like the head king at CAA. He loves you, and he he's super into like body optimization, like getting the full performance out of the body. And he was listening to talk about sleep. And I think you got the the ring on. I said I'm the best sleeper in the UFC. I dude, I I'll said that. I'll get to that. I'll get to that ring thing. I have issues okay. with the ring thing, but. Um, he was saying that he was like, it's. I think what's the narrative on Sugar Sean off, off, off the Sugar Shane, off the the way he looks, <laughs> off the the way he looks, and you wouldn't think like you think he just like walks in the gym, does his thing, and you know he's not like that professional athlete. But when you hear him talking, he talks about his sleep and stuff like that. So you, I mean, dude, obviously you have, your hair's crazy, you know, you had chains and tattoos and stuff, but you're actually pretty conscious of your health. Yeah, I think. Um I'm very conscious. Like the, the first time I listened to Matthew Walker and Joe Rogan, changed my sleep forever. That was like he's a sleep doctor. Sleep Did you make expert. it through the whole podcast? Yeah. I, wow. I, I make it through. I fell asleep, dude. I make it through a lot of Joe. I've like the last oh, ten. I probably listened to eight of them. But anyway, I listened to that. That changed my sleep forever. Um, it's the number one performance enhancer ever. Like you go and train hard and eat good, but you don't sleep good. You're, you're not fucked. gonna get out of it. You go hard. You go. You have like a good training session. But you don't eat good, but you sleep decent. Like it's not the same. I'm training good, smart, not overtraining, eating good, perfect diet in camp, nutritionist, blood, get my blood done, oh, damn, and I'm sleeping good. I'm fucking, I'm dialed in, and I think my performances show that. Agree. You don't go and have performance after performance after performance like I'm doing without everything dialed in. And with the sleep, like what, what are those called? The sleep ring? Aura ring. Aura ring? Yeah. So I, my brother wears all the time. He wears that in his wedding ring. It looks uh -huh. like Chris Angel. I make fun <laughs> of him all the time. Too much rings. But with my, I wore it for like a month. What I didn't like about it, especially as a fighter, like 
I'm sure your coach can attest to this. Like some days you're not going to feel good. Mm -hmm. But if I have a app that goes, take it easy today, I'm like, bitch, I got, I'm Shark Tank yeah. today. I got yeah. eight rounds with these world class dudes. So that would get in my mind, like, even though I wasn't training, it'd be like, take today off. I'm yeah. like, dude, I have three shows, two stand ups at night, yeah. and, and I got to train, and then I got to pick up my, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm like, it can be a mental fuck for sure. I, I feel like I have it so dialed in that if I know I'm sparring Saturday, like that's gonna change what I'm doing Friday because I know I have to, you know, have good rounds Saturday. But I just have rest. camp such fucking dialed in, you know, I, I, that it doesn't fuck with me. And my sleeps, like I said, I have some of the best. Oh yeah, I want to tell you that too. I said, but in in the interview before the f fight, like fight week, I said I have the best sleep in the UFC. Like a couple hours later, I'm like, fuck, I shouldn't have said that. I'm gonna be a meme, yeah, dude. I'm gonna be a fucking oh, meme. Dude, I'm gonna get out? knocked out, <laughs> and I'm gonna be. It's gonna say that. Like I thought for sure that was gonna be Yo, it. Fuck. I, I really like, God, I shouldn't have said that. But, but no, sleep is kind of like uh, the secret performance enhancer. A lot of people don't think about. A hundred percent to anything. You want to be a better stand up. You want to be a better fucking anything. Not even physical. If you want to be a better fucking teacher or professor or fucking of anything, sleep's gonna be it. Hundred percent, dude. There's that hype for a little bit where, like, I think it was like P. Diddy was like, I only sleep four hours. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to try that. No, I, and it's, it, yeah. And I would have never, I would have never learned about it if I didn't listen to that podcast. That, pod that changed, podcast changed, changed my, life. my life. A lot of Joe's podcasts do, too. For sure. Uh, my boys at Suplex, I think it's at Suplex Sneakers on Instagram. I went to them because they're, they're my shoe plug, right? I have all the shoes in the yeah, world. Yeah. So they're my shoe plug. I'm like, hey, for the fighters that I have on, I want to give them a shoe that represents them. Okay. And they're like, say less. They're like, what do you want to do for a sugar? So I came up with this idea. I'm like, can you find? Can you source this shoe? And they're like, we'll find it. So shout out oh, to uh, at Suplex Sneakers. They're in Philly. But as far as any hard shoe to get, any shoe in general, they're the best in the world. My boy Mike Monster down there is a pet fox, whatever. So really? these are the shoes I selected for you. Fuck. They're the Jordan 1 J Balvin's. They're oh, the most Balvin. yes. They're the most unique Jordan ones. Like so, oh, the Jordan one shit. silhouette has been done a million times. It, they do all these collabs, and these are the most unique and loud ones. And to me, these represent you because you got to be the most unique guy in the UFC. So these Jordan ones represent you, my man. Dude, I'm fucking pumped. I feel like they're right up your alley, man. And Takashi Six Nine is gonna be all over these. Bro, they're fucking fire, Holy man. I don't, ha I don't have them myself, but they're Dude, fucking fire. Dude, these are the sickest fucking shoes I've ever seen. I love that pink. I mean, Dude. I mean is that not a sugar this shoe? This is the sickest shoe I've ever. Yes, they're so is. sick, bro. Not easy to get. They Dude, come I with, appreciate that. Man. No problem, Thank brother. You so much. Yeah, thanks for doing the show, these are man. So dope. Yeah, aren't they dope? Um, yeah, these are fucking I'm a, friend of, I'm a fan of J Balvin, too. Yeah. They got the smiley these face in them, dude. Sick, dude. They got all the crazy colors. No. They're the most unique Jordan of all time. Dude, yeah, those are nuts. But those are from me and my friends at Suplex in dude. Philly, dude. Yes, thank you, guys. Hopefully you rock them. Oh, of course. You gotta those be careful just... rocking these bad boys. You don't want to step on these. Yeah, you don't want to get robbed either. Hollywood's getting a little dicey, man. Oh, dude, the different... Oh. Yeah, those dude. Are fucking those are sick, you in a nutshell, dude. brother. I appreciate that. Yeah, you man. got that it, brother. Give me the hit super hand. Super sick. Dude, that. No, no those are Those dope. represent you, dog, so hopefully you wear them. Oh, I'm going to get a Don't be the guy who just puts them on a shelf know. or something. Okay. Yeah, I'm, already, I'm, already, I'm already thinking of ideas with that. You already got dope. It's my suitcase that I'm already thinking these will go with. Yes, sir. I'll take a, I'm going to get a sick ticket, though. Shout out to Suplex, man. They're the ones that source those and found them. Dude, shout out. Suplex? Suplex. They're here in LA? They're in Philly. Philly? Okay. But they, you know, they're worldwide. You'll see them on uh, at Super Bowl. Those are nuts, dude. I'm yeah, man. So I can't thank you enough, dude. Yeah, you know, no, I always support you. Man. You crush this as Ooh. usual. You're the first guest since I left Showtime to be on Food Truck Diary. I hit you, you up. I'm like, dude, you, uh, my team's running on this on Thick Boy now. I need a big guest. You said say less. Yes, to, and, and a fight companion. Wanna, or uh, Calabasas. Yep, let's I'm do a, Calabasas fight companion, man. I want to come down and do that, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate dude, that. That was fucking dope. You heal up. Tell your boy Takash69 what's up. Yeah. Hopefully, in, <laughs> hopefully enjoyed the food. And uh, yeah, man, appreciate you. Dude, yeah, thank you, man. Sugar, everybody. Thanks for doing it, brother. Dude, these are fucking sick. Make it big, big, super thick. From my wallet to my check. I don't want it if it's skinny, but I need it if it's thick.